Welcome back Team Fever, back again with another video. I'm back with another wrestling video and in this video I'm giving my 2019 end of the year awards for WWE and I'm laughing because let me just say this I debated on making this because WWE did not deserve this video let me tell y'all so I've been watching WWE since 2002 and I'm I'm one of those fans that was obsessed with it and had no friends that watched wrestling like I had maybe one or two who like didn't like it as much as me I'm like a die-hard wrestling fan watch it watch some form of pro wrestling every single day of my life since 2002 when I first started watching like Super fan, super duper fan. Like it's still real to me, damn it. Like that type of fan. I think 2019 was the number one worst year since I've been watching. It's the worst year. I, it was no redeeming. Well, I can't say that. I can't say that. But I mean, like I just I was watching because I'm, I'm a wrestling fan. That's why I'm watching. But when I say I'm watching, I'm really not. I'm I got it on because I have to. Like I feel like I have to. But I'm just. I'm not into it at all. Like this year, WWE, and I think they even came on screen. Like maybe that was last year, or 2018, when they were coming on screen saying like, "Oh, we know the product. We're sorry. We're gonna listen to the fan." But it was just so bad. Like, and what I didn't, I didn't even like the beginning of the year when they brought in the NXT people to Raw and SmackDown, like Ricochet and Aleister Black and Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. I hated that because it's like. Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano are in the middle of something else. They just brought people on just for the name. So Ricochet's on Raw, so just you gotta watch to see Ricochet. And for a while, it was just Ricochet's on Raw. And he was just doing his Ricochet stuff. And it had nothing behind it. Same with Aleister Black. And then like we watched Aleister Black inside the closet, cutting the same promo over and over. They dropped so many things. Mojo Raleigh, what happened? Mojo, uh, Sheldon Benjamin. Not that I wanted anything to come of this stuff, but it's just stuff that they had. Like, it was just a horrible year. Completely horrible, horrible year. NXT was good. NXT had a good show, but I feel like it even got hurt because WWE just kept, like, they ruined, well, they didn't ruin. Strong word. But they really, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a bad show. But I'm going to do this award video. So, I'm gonna start off with theme song of the year, best new theme song. And I feel like I really, it was so easy for me because I can't really think of that many new theme songs. I really can't. The only one that I automatically know of and like I really like, not that I'm saying now nah, I'm doing the video, two of them just came in my head, but I wouldn't change them. But Sasha Banks, she got a new theme song and so did the Kabuki Warriors. But my vote would go automatically to Bray Wyatt. I think I like it. It's really, really cool. It's really, it goes with his character. Most improved. Now, I know y'all are about to disagree with me with this because y'all are about to be like, what? Because y'all probably expecting me to say somebody like Baron Corbin, Keith Lee, somebody like that. But honestly, this is most improved to me and only me because I know a lot of y'all are probably like, what? This person been good. They've been the best. Why are you? Honestly, I'm giving this gotta go, I'm giving this award to Io Shirai because honestly, I wasn't a fan. I was not a fan of Io Shirai as a face in the Mae Young Classic and watching her as a face in NXT. I didn't really like her that much. I thought that she was overrated. I didn't see why people liked her so much. I thought her in-ring work was okay at best, and I thought like she always missed her moonsault. Like it was fast, but she always missed it. Go back and watch, it was one of the Mae Young Classic matches. She did the moonsault and completely missed. She completely missed uh, her opponent. Her hands touched her, touched the opponent, but her body landed flat on the mat and she pinned her off of it. And I'm like, actually, I think I might've talked about her having the worst finisher of the year in my last year's video. I might've did that, but to me, she's most improved because she turned heel. First of all, I really became a fan of her in her match with Shayna Baszler, her program with Shayna Baszler. But then it's like when she turned heel and her match with Candice LeRae, like she, her match with, um, who was it, Mia Yim, like she was just, she was my favorite thing in War Games. She was my favorite thing in the Survivor Series match, just like her, her entrance and how she be. I just love her. I, she went from being one of my least favorite to where I'm like, uh, whatever, don't care about her, to one of my favorites. She is the best heel. The female superstar of the year, I gave this to Shayna Baszler, hands down. I feel like, even though sometimes I feel like Shayna Baszler looks weak, she's this character and persona of a bully. And, well, I guess that makes sense, because bullies are weak. 
And she do win her matches, but she get beat up a lot and she get punked out a lot. But you can't deny that she was she held the NXT Women's Championship the whole year, right? Yeah, the whole year. And she her matches were good. She didn't have I think her matches were better than Becky's. So I think Shannon Baszler had a better year than Becky. Really, because for a minute, Becky was with Lacey Evans in the beginning of the year, right after she won, and she even lost one of the titles. Like, I don't know. Let me not compare, but I'm going to just say Shannon Baszler gets Women's Superstar of the Year, in my opinion. Match of the Year. I actually gave this to Gargano Cole at TakeOver 25. I know y'all might go with, and I kind of wanted to go with Cole Gargano at TakeOver New York, but I don't know. Like, you can pick any of, the, any of their matches, really. It's Cole Gargano, and I'm not even going to go into that because just go back and watch. They have the best matches all year. Face of the year, I'm going with Kofi Kingston because he, he was booked good as a face, but he was also like fans went crazy and they still go crazy for him. To this day in 2019, I saw SmackDown yesterday, yeah, yesterday, and I, they just, people were behind him and his whole story, the, the only thing I, I don't like about Kofi is that he lost the title in 11 seconds and nothing came of it. So it seemed like it, the whole thing was a waste, and I don't know. <laughs> and I just say he was booked to good, but that wasn't booked to good. But yeah, to me, Kofi was the face of the year. The only person I think will come in second will be Gargano. Heel of the year, I'm giving it to Baron Corbin. Whether y'all like him because of him as a person or him as an on-screen character, he gets booze, legit booze, more than any other heel inside WWE right now and he doesn't get cheers at all. He doesn't get a pop cheer and he's okay with it. He doesn't try to be cool or anything like that. He owns that he's the heel, the top heel. He's not like Triple H inside Evolution heel, but he's a good heel. He's the best heel on the main roster right now. I mean, most disappointing match of the year. I'm giving it to Survivor Series main event, Charlotte versus, I actually could have gave this to the WrestleMania main event. Jeez, Becky did not have a good year. Oh, Becky did not have a good year. Look at her title match. So, Becky had a bad WrestleMania main event, a bad Survivor Series main event. She All her matches with Lacey Evans, none of those were good. Oh, I feel bad because I like Becky. Nobody sent this to Becky. I like Becky, but she did not have a good year when it comes to matches. Uh, the only one I can think of where it's like, yeah, was Sasha Banks' Hell in a Cell match. That's that's not good. But uh, <laughs> with that being said, uh, the most disappointing match I gave it to Survivor Series: Charlotte, Becky, and Shayna. Because I just I really thought, look at those three names. Those are literally probably the top three. Well, except Oscar. You put Oscar in there, and those are the top four in the whole company. <laughs> Since Ronda's not around, so you would expect that match to be great, and it was not. But I guess even WrestleMania, those are the top. You can. And her match, it just wasn't good. WrestleMania probably was more disappointing because the ending didn't make sense. At least the Survivor Series one made sense at the end. So actually, most disappointing match goes to WrestleMania main event. No, because I feel like WrestleMania main event actually had some good spots. Survivor Series had no good spots. So you can either pick Survivor Series that had no good spots and a good ending, or not even a good ending, but an ending, or you can pick WrestleMania, which had... Some good spots, but the ending made no sense, and it never even was followed up on. So either one of those two, maybe they tie. Superstar of the year, 2019 was owned by Adam Cole. Adam Cole was the superstar of the year. He had the best matches, he had the best feuds, he was the best on the mic, he had the best group. The people in his group had the held titles. He even won matches because I had a, I criticized that he could never win by himself at one point, but. He was winning matches by himself. Roderick Strong won matches by himself. So Adam Cole had the best group yet. He beat Dane Ryan clean. He would have beat Seth Rollins clean, which I think he should have. Um, yeah. Adam Cole. He owned 2019. I don't think anybody can argue with that. Most overrated. My, how the tables have turned. Because last year, or not last year, <laughs> not last year at all, but, um, in 2007, no, that's too early, right? In 2010, 11, 12, 13, 13 maybe 14, you would have picked this person. Y'all already know who I'm about to say now. You would have picked this person as the most underrated. And now in 2019 and 18, and 
probably 17. I'm picking him, and I'm sure a lot of y'all will pick him for the most overrated. I'm going with Dolph Ziggler. He had title matches in 2019. He was in the main event in 2019. He was inside of like a top heel group in 2019. The only thing he did all year that was good to me was Goldberg. The Goldberg match itself was good, but to me, Dolph Ziggler needs to go away from the WWE. I'm not a fan of him anymore at all. When he comes on screen, it's like, ugh. And that's a shame. It really is a shame. It's probably not his fault, but it is kind of his fault because he should have left. He should have left. He should have left, not it should have been me. Most underrated, I feel bad for this guy because he was treated so good outside of WWE. He was treated bad in WWE initially, left WWE, became a star. I didn't even know he was as good as he was when he was in TNA and on his other shows. And now, like he's good on the mic and ring. He has the look, everything. And he came back to WWE probably thinking like, oh, I'm about to be a star. And he has done Jack, you know what? EC3, poor EC3. I bet out of everybody on the roster, he regrets signing the most. He regrets signing the most because he has wasted two years, two years of his career in WWE doing absolutely nothing. And considering what he was in TNA, go back and watch some EC3, some Ethan Carter III stuff in TNA. And you're like, what is WWE? WWE is like ruining this guy. Like, I feel so bad for him if he cares. I know some people don't care. The next category is feud of the year. I'm just gonna leave it at this. Cole Gargano. That's it. And we're gonna go to the next to the next category. Mark out moment of the year. I didn't mark out for anything. Alright. <laughs> Let me just say that. I did not care about anything this year. If y'all didn't already know that from the beginning of the video, I didn't mark out for anything. So on here I actually wrote Daniel Bryan. Like, I don't know. Something he did. Like he was the saving grace of this year because he's my favorite wrestler and he's in this company, so whatever. I just put Daniel Bryan. Uh, I don't know what I marked out for for him, but yeah. When he was beating up the Fiend, I actually did a buy-in that he might win the title, so maybe that. I don't know. Tag Team of the Year. Leaving it at this. Fish and O'Reilly, Red Dragon. I feel like not a lot of tag teams did have that good of a year either. Like, no one. Really? Like, what? This is year. This is year. What the heck? I mean, who would be second? The War Raiders? Because of what they did in NXT? That's on mic. Huh, I left it blank. I didn't put anybody. Um, who's the best on mic? Who's the best on mic this year? Best on mic. Uh, I, I can just say Adam Cole or Daniel Bryan. Adam Cole or Daniel Bryan, I guess. I don't know. I really don't know who's the best on mic. Sorry, y'all. Uh, in the last category, well, I also have a segment of the year that was inside of there, but I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, y'all. But the show of the year, I gave it to War Games. There's only four matches, and I can watch that pay-per-view again. It was the saving grace of the year. I love that show. But that's it for this video, y'all. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, share the video on all four social media. Until next time, y'all catch you later.